So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be stepping away from the M1 iPad Pro and we're going to move over to the M1 MacBook Air. And now I know that most people come here for the iPad Pro content but today we're going to be going over Windows 365 on the M1 MacBook Air. And Windows 365 is Microsoft's new cloud PC service which allows you to use pretty much a Windows computer off of Microsoft servers in the cloud or wherever their databases are, are held and things like that and be able to pull down an entire Microsoft computer or Windows PC on any operating system. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection, peripherals, and obviously a display. So that's what we're gonna try out today with Mac OS on the M1 MacBook Air because we've tried it on the iPad Pro a ton. So today we're gonna to talk about how much it is, how to get it, whether or not it works on an internet browser versus an actual dedicated app. We're gonna go through everything and even talk about some secondary monitor support and things like that and how it runs that way. So without further ado, if you guys came for Windows 365 on Mac OS, this is the video for you. And if you guys want some iPad Pro content, we're gonna go right back into that right after this video. But without further ado, let's get it going. So let's hop right into this video and open up Google Chrome. So I have run it on Safari and Google Chrome. I have not tried it on Microsoft Edge browser quite yet. But out of the two, Chrome does run a little bit better when doing it inside of the browser, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in a second. But to start off, we're gonna talk about the pricing. So just type in Windows 365 into Google, find, it, find the actual link, which should just be this first one right here. So we'll click on that, and then you're dropped right into the pricing. So this is the entry level pricing for all three categories. So you have basic, standard, and premium. Basically, it lets you know like, hey, for basic, you're running light productivity tools, standard, full range of productivity tools, and premium run high performance workloads. And what you see here in the differences is pretty much just the amount of cores and then the amount of RAM that's put into it. So these are the, again, the base model level. So basic, you're at $31 a month. Premium, you're at $66 a month. But if you go into plans and pricing, because you're probably gonna say like, hey, is the best option that I have just four cores, 16 gigs, and 120 gigs of storage? No, it's not. So you're gonna go to see all plans and pricing. Then we're gonna scroll through here and this is where you can really start to spec everything up from a computing standpoint and a cloud PC standpoint. So this is the selling point and this is the beauty of Microsoft and Windows 365. You can go as low as $24 a month, one core, two gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. I don't really know who or why anybody would wanna use anything like that, but you can go as high as $162 a month, 512 gigs of storage, 32 gigs of RAM, and eight cores. So at that point, you're dealing with a pretty powerful computer because think about it, $162 a month, that's roughly eighteen to nineteen hundred dollars a year for a cloud PC. So at that point, you probably get a pretty powerful computer with that year cost anyway. So this thing better work as advertised, if not better. And then again, if you go into the enterprise, it's pretty much the same exact categories. It's just a matter of if you buy in bulk, you're gonna get a cheaper price per user. And those are the really only differences when it comes to the plans and pricing. So the more money that you spend, the more cores, the more RAM, and the more storage you're gonna get, which makes absolute sense. Unfortunately, when I did sign up on day one, there was a two month free trial, but if you guys can see up here, which I did here on Twitter, they are not offering any more Windows 365 trials, which is very, very unfortunate because I have a two month free trial that I've been using and I plan to use for that entire two month period. So as of right now, you can't sign up for free anymore, but I still think it's a great thing to know. And now let's move forward a little bit. So once you've decided on which one you want and which category you want, all you do is you click on this buy now button, right? I pressed no, I just, whatever, I left it at $35 a month. You press no and you walk through this whole thing. Now I personally had a personal Microsoft account from before, right? So all it asked me to do was convert that into a business account, which made no difference whatsoever. There was no like uh, W9. I didn't have to like prove that it was a business. They literally just took my personal account, converted it into a business account, and then I became the admin of that business. And then all you have to do is follow the instructions on here. It takes like two minutes to do and it walks you through the entire process. So once you've created that business account, you do have to put your credit card information. Again, I did the free trial. They asked for my credit card information, but they took $0 out. With this one, you're probably gonna have to pay that $31 up front. And to give you the caveat, I did get the cheapest one. So I'm paying $35 a month on the free trial for two cores, four gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of storage. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually get to it. So to get to the actual website, you're gonna go to windows365.microsoft.com. So here, they're gonna bring you into the entire portal. And this is what you're greeted with, right? This is what the portal is. You have, as you can see, my cloud PC right here. You have a couple quick actions, which we are going to touch on in a little bit. But there aren't too many options when it comes to this, right? You have the little settings wheel right here, which just lets you restart the PC, reset it, rename, and then troubleshoot it. And then it, ideally, you've gotta open it in browser. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna open it and see exactly what it's like. So here we go. 
for opening this up. I always press allow for file transfer, even though we'll touch on that again in a little bit. It doesn't work too well. Then you have to re-sign in here with your password, let it load up, and we're about to be in Windows 10 on an M1 MacBook Air. And again, this is the cheapest MacBook Air. Got it through the education store for, I believe, $900 eight gigs of RAM internally, only 256 gigs of storage, and the M1 processor. But as you can see, we're greeted immediately with the same exact page that I was on before. So this is what I was playing with before. I had to take the thumbnail that you guys clicked on for this video. But you can see that here we have, like I said, Windows 10 on a Mac computer on the M1 on the latest version of Mac OS. So the one issue that we did have on the iPad Pro when running it within the browser is the fact that the start menu would disappear every single time we went into full screen mode. So here we are, we're in full screen mode, everything is awesome, everything seems to be working as advertised. So you have your mouse, let's open up something from Microsoft Edge, let's type in YouTube, and again, I'm using just the keyboard that's on the actual MacBook Air, I'm using an external mouse right here, so it's still just connected via Bluetooth, and you can see that we're moving around, no big deal. And then here we have YouTube, and again, it's a little bit laggy, and the reason it's laggy, right, it's not because of my personal Wi-Fi connection because we're dealing with around four to 500 megabytes download and upload speeds on Wi-Fi. I think it's the fact that I have such a weak computer. So I have, like I said, two cores and four gigs. So the latency, there's a little bit of latency. I, again, it's probably a combination of the fact that I'm using a cloud PC and the fact that this PC is pretty watered down and weak. But you can see that we can open up a YouTube video and play it. And ideally, the sound will come out through the actual laptop itself. So give it a second to load. We have the volume right here. We are maps, and this is making an impact. So the volume by default will default to your actual MacBook speakers, which is something that with the iPad Pro, every single time you open up Windows V65, you have to go back into the settings and go through all that. But again, for the most part, it works. You know, your shortcut. So let's go with option T. Is that the shortcut? No, control T. So, that, so your shortcuts work. If you go to ESPN.com, that'll work as well. As you can see, Patrick Mahomes. Anybody excited for the NFL season, comment that down below. I'm a big Dolphins fan. But, and again, all the different gestures work. So I'm, this is with my trackpad that I'm swiping up and down, moving with the trackpad, and now I use the click wheel on here to scroll up and down. This is also working. And like you guys saw, the actual keyboard works perfectly fine. So this is Microsoft or Windows 365 and Windows 10 through the browser running a cloud PC, right? And it works pretty well, like I said, if you wanna exit the full screen, you can do that. Again, very minimal settings. There isn't too much that you can do with it. You have your little three dots here, which gives you the about and feedback section, the settings wheel, nothing there. You have a full screen, you have the ability to pin this one because some people have multiple actual cloud PCs or if you're an admin and you like to have vision and sight or insight into all the different cloud PCs that you're working with you can actually pin them and they'll show up on this top bar right here but now what I want to show you is actually how to use it with the remote desktop client because that works a little bit better so all you have to do is press this little X button right here get out of the remote desktop client and now I'm going to show you exactly how to get the remote desktop so you're going to go up here where it says download remote desktop we're going to click on there you're going to go to get to the Mac App Store right we'll open it in the App Store I already have it installed so all you do once you install it, you press open, let it open up, let it do its thing. And you can see that this is the application, right? I have my cloud PC already installed in there. There's two different options. There's the PCs and the workspaces. Now to add your new cloud PC into this remote desktop, this is something that I had an issue with for a very long time. Somebody, thank goodness, shout out to the people on Twitter for always helping me out. But all you have to do, which is super, super simple, you go back in, into here, press X, go to your subscription URL. So you're gonna click on this, you're gonna copy this URL, and then you're gonna go back to the remote desktop client, you're gonna press this plus sign, add a workspace, not a PC, and you're gonna paste the URL onto here and press add, and then you're done. That's all you have to do to then configure and get this working on your remote desktop. So then to open it up, you just double click on here, it's gonna ask you to sign in once again, I believe so. So let it do its thing, yep. Let's turn my cap locks off. We'll sign in and then voila, you are now using the remote desktop client and running Windows. So you can see that it, with the remote desktop client, it feels a little bit more like a native OS. It runs a little smoother, All right? Let's open up Microsoft Edge again. You guys already know, I love going on YouTube to show stuff off. We can open the start menu, maybe open an Excel file. 
which again, Excel is pretty slow. It's kind of funny how Microsoft applications, like the Microsoft Suite, opens and runs way better on the M1 MacBook than on like a weak Windows computer, right? But we can open it up, but you can see that it opens up and if I move it around, again, a little laggy, but it has to do with a, probably a combination of the latency and the fact that this computer is actually very, very slow. So then again, when it comes to sound, the sound will default even on the remote desktop client to your Google MacBook Air. A phone plan by Google. And again, it works it works pretty normally, like it works as advertised. You can do pretty much anything that you want that a Windows computer can do. Yes, so there's a bunch of questions that people have asked me. You can actually install native Windows, I guess, applications onto this Windows PC. Because again, when you're saving those applications and when you're installing those applications, you're installing them to a cloud PC. You're not installing them onto this computer, you're installing it into a cloud PC. And then another thing that I wanna show B-roll of, which again, on the iPad Pro does not work, so Microsoft really has gotta step up their cloud PC situation on the, my iPad Pro is secondary monitor support. So secondary monitor support does work and works as it should on the actual laptop itself. So if you plug in the secondary monitor and it'll work as an extension of that monitor or of that actual display, and works exactly as advertised, even down to kind of the arrangement of where your screens are. So I have a secondary monitor right here that I connect to my MacBook Pro, that I connect to my MacBook Air. We get that secondary support and I have the way that I'm arranged. I always have it that way. And it'll keep that arrangement setting even though it's technically a different computer and it runs perfectly. So I really, really like that, that piece when it comes to Windows and being able to use it on your Mac computer and still have that secondary display. And even if you want to, you can like grab this, minimize it, run Windows on a secondary display, and then run your normal, again, because back here we're on Mac OS, and then this little window is Windows 10. And even in this situation, you can still open up stuff. Again, the, the screen's gonna be a little wonky, a little bit weird, but you can still do everything that you would want to, even running on Mac OS, which I think is a beautiful thing to have. And then another thing that I did test out that I do have questions for you guys is, so when you do have, let's say, an external SSD, or maybe, you know, a little thumb, thumb drive like this, and you plug it into your Windows 10 computer, I have not been able to get the Windows 10 Cloud PC to recognize external storage. So that is unfortunate. I have found ways, and they're kind of complicated and workarounds into how to actually get, you know, external storage to be recognized by your Cloud PC, but it involves almost like turning that storage into a Cloud storage and then connecting that to your Cloud PC to then have access to it. So it's a little bit complicated. If you guys have a better solution, please comment it down below and I'd be more than happy to test it out because that is the one caveat or the one thing that I have not been able to get to work, which is getting external drives, external thumb, you know, thumb drives or whatever you want to call them to be recognized by Windows 10 operating system, even though they are being recognized by Mac OS while I'm still running this. But those are the main things. So we got the price down, we got how to run it, where to run it, whether it's on Chrome or on the remote desktop and then some of the limitations that we have with it. But let's get out of this view, go to the normal view and kind of summarize everything. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you guys saw, hopefully now you're able to A, know how much it costs to run this cloud PC. It's really not cheap. As you guys saw, 30 to $35 a month for the cheapest version. That gets you a two core, four gigs of RAM, only 128 gigs of storage. And you can spec it up and spend anywhere from 150 to $200 a month on a cloud PC, depending on what spec you build out. But again, hopefully you guys figured out how to use it, how much it costs, you know, that it's better through the remote desktop client that they actually run. We even get secondary monitor support, which is something that does not actually work with iPad Pro. If you use Windows 365 on the iPad Pro, then you're still gonna be letterboxed in and it's still gonna mirror your display versus using a secondary display, you know, like a normal traditional desktop OS should work. And then finally, to summarize, we weren't able to get any like SSDs or external hard drives, any physical ones at least, to be plugged directly into the cloud PC. I found that there's some workarounds, but maybe that'll be for another video because it gets a little complicated because you basically have to like cloud storage a physical storage device and then connect it to your cloud PC. And leave a comment below if you guys know a much easier way to do that or if I'm doing something wrong because this is all new to me. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike even though this is a MacBook Air video. Always keep it on the iPad Pro. And then also Tiny Rigs, guys. Tiny Rigs is doing some awesome stuff. And then finally, if you guys want the wallpapers, all that stuff is linked down in the description below. And subscribe for more. Peace.